Let's begin looking at a do until loop, please. So once again, I need those laptops closed, I need the earbuds out, and I need your attention on me. Okay? So an undefined loop. We've done, in basic, we've done for next, which is a defined loop. Now we're going to look at a do until. Um, Scratch has something very similar. They call it repeat until. The only difference is, is that Scratch has repeat until at the top, and then um, the loop is inside, right? And then it sort of loops back. But the until thing is at the top, even though it doesn't check until it gets to the bottom of the loop. It's kind of weird, okay? So basic is a little bit different in that the until is at the bottom. So after you need to loop until a certain condition is met, this loops for an undetermined period of time. You don't know how many times it's going through. So we call this an uh, undefined or indeterminate loop. This would be useful in the guess a number game because remember in the guess a number game, if you got it right before the 10 chances, it said, you got it right, but keep guessing, buddy. Too bad. Right? So we would keep guessing until the answer is right. Makes sense. So here would be the appropriate pseudocode for this. You would pick the random number. These are your steps. You would do until the answer is right. We would get the guess from the user, add one to our guess count, check the guess against the correct number, and if, and if wrong, then we would end our loop and we would go back up and do it again. And you'll notice that in my pseudocode, I've even got that invitation happening. <coughs> Okay? And then at the end, we would display the number of guesses to get the correct answer. So I'm going to do this loop until the answer is right. Here is the syntax for a do until. Emma, I need you to close your laptop, please. Okay? It is do, the word do, then a whole bunch of code, and then loop until, and then some condition. Okay? So very similar to scratch. Here's the scratch one. Let me just copy and paste that. Well, I didn't mean to cut it out, right? Same idea. Okay, we don't have the word do here. And the until is at the bottom of the loop, the bottom of the indentation. Okay? And what that means is that it does everything inside here, and then it doesn't check the until until it gets to the bottom. So in other words, the loop always happens at least once. It always does whatever's in the loop at least once. So you have to make sure you want it to do that. Okay, so here is an example, just counting to 100. You would have something like x equals 1, do, indent, print x, x equals x plus 1. What's that called, by the way, when you put something equal to itself plus 1? What kind of variable is that called? It starts with the letter A. Accumulation. Accumulator. An accumulator is a value that goes up, right, like a score or something like that. x equals x plus 1. So we would loop until x equals 101. Why would we loop until 101 and not 100? Exactly. Okay. Because if I print my x, right, if I want to count to 100, I have to print 100, and then x equals x plus 1. That's going to be when, when I print the 100, then the x is going to bump up to 101, and that's when I want to stop. Right. So loop until x equals 101. Note that do loop until, uh, sorry, do until loops always perform the loop at least once. Why do you think I have two stars beside that? It's important. Do loops have one special characteristic. They occur, they go through the loop, always once. Here's some code for you. So I've got number equals int of rnd of 1 times 100. I should probably have a plus 1 there, shouldn't I? So that it's between 1 and 100. I'm going to print Pick a number between 1 and 100, and then I'm going to do this. I'm going to input, what is your guess? Get my value of guess with a semicolon here. Guess count equals guess count plus 1. <coughs> I'm going to loop until the guess is equal to the number. And once I've done my loop, then I'm going to print yes, and that took guess count guesses. And it's going to tell you how many guesses it took. Okay, so this is a loop here. Do loop until. Should we uh, punch that in, do you think? No. Yes. Okay. So what I'm going to get you to do is I'm going to get you to type that in. I'll leave it up on the screen. And then after you type it in, I want you to add to it so that the program tells the user whether they're too high or too low. And you've done something similar, so it shouldn't be too hard. You need to add something in between right in here after the input. 
if it's too high or it's too low. Go ahead and do that. All right, well, I've got my, my uh, program in here, exactly what you guys typed in. How do I do the high-low? Inside my loop, right here, I, you would have something like if guess is bigger than number, then what? You would print uh, too high. So, were we supposed to do that? Or yep, that? you were supposed to add this. Now, if it's not too high, what's the other option? Too low. Is it exactly, is it too low? In fact, you might want to consider something like this. You might want to have if guess equals number, then print. You already have that, though. You got it. You could do that, yeah. I might have, you're right, I've got it down here, right? Okay. You could say, if it's equal to the number, then do that. Else if, and you can use an else if. Okay, so in other words, if it's not equal to, then do another check. Otherwise, guess if it's too big. And if it's not equal to it and it's not too big, then it has to be too low. Can you also do two ifs? You could. This is probably more efficient. How so? Because it's just giving you more stuff to find out. You can do like the ifs. You, you could, but then it, it does the other two ifs even though the first one is true. This one, only one of those things. If this bit of code here, twin, is substantial, then it does, or if this is big, then it does all that even though it doesn't need to. Like if the first, if the guess is equal to the number, if you do this, there's no need to do these. But if you do it as three separate ifs, it's going to do them even though the first one is true. Well, the first one we have at the bottom, though. You already have, like, say, a loop until guess equals to number. You already talked That's true. That's true. But that's that's your way out, right? Yeah, that's the one we have in the mm. I guess you could just go uh, if if it's too high or too low, right? Yeah, but if it's half. but if it's equal to it, if you have too if you have a greater than you have a greater than and then an else, right? The else is going to include the less than, right? You've got to have an if to see if it's just less than. So there's there's a variety of ways you could do it. Okay. Yeah, I mean, it's not a big deal in this sense because it's so small, right? Okay, so you would have something like this. Go if you have to go, yeah. Oh, I'm going to put my plus one here. Now, one other thing that I want to show you is when you're doing a random number thing like this, it's a wonderful idea to actually print the number. Now, obviously, you're not going to leave that in there for the game, but it's good to have it in there so that you know what the number is so you can test it correctly. Okay? So I... Oh. Yeah, that's just my view. Okay. I think what I need to do is, I think it's like this. It's else if I get my languages mixed up a little bit here. I think I need to do this. Yeah. It looks like, uh, by my reading here, it looks like I thought Liberty supported an else if, but it doesn't. So are you guys just doing this? Is that what you're doing? Yeah, we're just doing the if, two ifs. Okay. Say in the beginning. Okay. If, if there's an, I understand that, Quinn, but if the language supports an else if, then you should use it. Well, doesn't it support an else? Because then what's the else of blue? Right? I know, but it wouldn't support the, the else if. What about if else? No. But some languages will support that, so. Like what? Pascal or C or Java or something like that. Does C take forever and ever and ever? Yeah, lots of them do, right? How do you ever program with like original basic? Yeah, I mean, this is as basic as you can get here, okay? Basic as a 1980s basic. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so what I'm saying here is, and once again, I mean, that's what the laptop's open. If you've got the random number printed, Hannah, if you've got the random number printed, then you can easily test it because I know that if I type in 40, it should be too high. If I type in 20, it should be too low. If I type in 36, I should get it. And it shouldn't take you forever to test it because you know, you can tell exactly what's going on here, right? It worked. Okay, once you've got it working, then of course you get rid of that number. Okay? Have to fix the what? 
Yeah. Oh, did it? Okay, I'll have to fix that. Okay. So, we've done the practice assignment. Here's hand in number seven. For those of you that do not know if this is a hand in, I will emphasize that this is a hand in. You know who I'm talking to. Write a program as a starting point for blackjack. Use a do loop until. The game is to see how close you can get to 21 with going without going over. So I'm sure that many of you have played 21 before. You're going to do until the user quits or they bust. How do they bust? You go over 21. You go over 21. If you're over 21, then you bust. Pick a random number, 1 to 10, each time. Do not pick a new random number each time. Oh, no, so you do pick a random number each time, right? You're picking a random card between 1 and 10 each time. I want you to keep track of the total and the number of cards taken. Okay? Your program, James, should look like this when it runs. This is what I'm asking you to do. Make it look like this. Your first card is a 6. Enter a 1 for a new card or a 0 for quit. I'm going to pick a new card. I got a 3. 6 plus 3 is equal to. Pat, are you watching? So you know what to do. Your first card is a 6. I pick 1, so I want a new card. I get a 3. 6 and 3 is 9. Do I want a new card? Yes. I use the number 1 to signify that. I got a 9. 9 plus 9 is 18. So I enter a 0 and I quit. Okay? I took 3 cards for a total of 18. That's all it does. That's all it does. You're trying to get as close to 21 as you can. Obviously, this game is not complete. This is just the beginner part, right? I will tell you this. The project is blackjack. So this is the starting code, the base code, for your blackjack program. Okay? So hand in number seven is to use a do until. Keep picking cards until you either bust or quit and see how far you get. You need to print me the total and you need to print me the number of cards. That should be in that handout that I gave you last week as well. Okay? I would like some pseudocode with it, some plan. Okay? You can do pseudocode right in comments. Right? So I need comments. Just put comments in there. Do your pseudocode right on there. You have to do error handling. If the person enters anything but a zero or a one, when, they, when you say, do you want a new card? It's one for a new card, zero for quit. If they put 27, don't let them. Keep making them say, Give me a new value, one or zero, a new card or quit. Don't let them put anything else in. That's called error handling. Do to that, okay? I will a lot. Bonus marks if you want to do this in Scratch. Okay? I need it in Liberty, okay? But if you have time and people are still behind and you've got nothing to do, you can do it in Scratch. It's not that hard. Okay? Does everyone understand the assignment? Can you go back to the instructions? Yep.